Dentistry by Virginia Evans, Jenny Dooley, and James Caldwell, DDS. Copyright Express Publishing. All rights reserved. Book 1. Unit 1. Dentistry. Exercise 5, page 5. Dentistry. A dentist's job. Dentists deal with the oral health of patients. Oral health includes the teeth, gums, and other structures of mouth. Dentists diagnose and treat related medical issues. They give instruction on tooth and gum care. They offer advice on decisions impacting oral health. How to become a dentist. Dentists must earn a college and a professional degree. They also need a license from the state. Workplace. Dentists may work alone or share a practice. They often employ support staff. Prospects. The dental industry is growing. Jobs should increase by 21% during the next decade. This is in response to greater public demand. Exercises 6 and 7, page 5. So why are you interested in joining our practice? I heard you were looking for another partner, and I am an experienced dentist. Can you tell me about your background? Well, I worked as an associate dentist for two years. Then I had my own practice for four years. Why did you discontinue your practice? My wife got transferred here from out of state. Okay. Do you have a professional license for the state? I do. Unit 2. Specializations. Exercise 5, page 7. Great Smiles. Dentists, Drs. Alan Westhoven, Mary Engelbart, Eunice Kim. Come get the care and attention you deserve. Our office is supplied with the most up-to-date equipment. Our dentists have years of experience in general dentistry. They also offer expert knowledge in various specialties. Orthodontics. Braces are available for adults and children. Endodontics. Root canals. Periodontics. Treatment for gingivitis and gum disease. Prosthodontics. Prosthetics for patients with maxillofacial injuries. Dentures and dental implants are available. Pediatric dentistry. Care for infants, toddlers, and young children. Oral surgery. Wisdom tooth extractions, oral-slash-maxillofacial pathology and radiology services are unavailable. Referrals are available for patients who require these services. Exercises 6 and 7, page 7. I have a question about your specialties. Okay. I have children ages 6 and 12. Do you offer services in pediatric dentistry? Yes, but I don't work with children. I specialize in endodontics. Okay. Well, I think my 12-year-old son needs braces. I'm afraid no one here works in orthodontics. In your ad, I saw that you took care of dental irregularities. Yes, but in prosthodontics, dentures and implants. No worries, though. I can make a referral. I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Unit 3. The Dental Practice. Exercise 5, page 9. Belleville, New Jersey Dental Clinic. For sale. Beautiful, modern, well-established office. Located on the second floor of a new building. Two operatories supplied with new chairs. Spacious waiting room with a large reception desk. One fully equipped restroom. Also includes a small lab. Staff area is accessible from the lab. Comes with a radiology room and a sterilization room. Two spare rooms are available. Enough space for a treatment room or recovery room. Storage room and mechanical room are in the basement. The doctor is relocating. She would like an immediate transfer of ownership. Asking price, $150,000. Willing to negotiate. Please email 
krobson34 at gomail.com or call Dr. K. Robson at 973-342-3634. Exercises 6 and 7, page 9. Hello, I'm calling about a clinic that's up for sale. Which office are you referring to? The one in Verona listed for $165,000. Dr. Chu's office. He's relocating, so he'd like to sell the property soon. Okay, could you tell me more about the location? Sure. It's located downtown in a well-established building. Is it modern? Absolutely. It's supplied with the latest technology and new chairs. Great. I'll discuss it with my partners. Then I'll give you a call back. Unit 4. Dental Personnel. Exercise 5, page 11. Brighton Street Dentistry. Employee Profiles Meet the staff at Brighton Street Dentistry. Our front office staff includes Jessica Parisi, Receptionist Luke Criswell, Office Manager Joanna Volp, Financial Coordinator Our back office staff includes Dr. James Fitz, DDS, Dentist Mike Chan, Dental Therapist Chrissy Wick, Lab Technician We recently hired two new staff members Tiffany Duarte, dental hygienist. I just joined Brighton Street Dentistry. I work closely with Dr. Fitz. I handle teeth cleanings. I look forward to meeting each patient. Chad Holmes, dental assistant. I have five years' experience. My job involves assisting the dentist. I am excited about this new opportunity. Exercises 6 and 7, page 11. Our dental practice has been growing so fast. Yes, business has been great. Do you think we need to hire more staff? Maybe. Our back office staff is having trouble keeping up with everything. Yes, we really do need another dental assistant. And possibly a part-time dental hygienist. That's a good idea. So we'll advertise for those two positions. Let's talk to the office manager first. We need to make sure we can afford both salaries. Of course. Unit 5. Dental Instruments. Exercise 5, page 13. Dentiquick. For all your dental supplies. Quick delivery, best prices. Dental mirrors. Simple stem, $7 or $22.50 for a pack of six. Sea probes. Single-ended, $8. Retractors. Sharp points, $47. Blunt points, $44. Two sizes available. Aspirating syringe. Type CW. 1.8 cc. $14.50. Burrs. Six-pack. Rounded or egg-shaped. Various sizes. From $20. Double-ended excavators. Various sizes. $8 $8 each or $7 for orders over 12. Double ended burnishers. Number 21 slash 22 and 27 slash 29. $10 each. Pluggers. Double ended round tips. $9. Stainless steel curettes. Double ended $9. Extraction forceps. Different models for molars, incisors, and anteriors. $25. Elevators, various sizes, $12. Stainless steel chisel, 7 inch, $15.50. Dental hand pieces, drills, various speeds and sizes. Click here to see our range. Exercises 6 and 7, page 13. Hi, I'd like to order some dental tools, please. I need them for tomorrow. Sure. Do you have an account with us? Yes, it's Garden Practice, Lakeland, account number 241. Okay, so what do you need? Twelve excavators and three probes, please. Three probes, did you say? Yes, that's right. No problem. We'll send them out to you today. Unit 6. The Mouth. Exercise 5, page 15.
The Mouth, Chapter 1. The mouth is important for speech and breathing. It is also necessary for eating and digestion. The mouth includes soft tissues such as the tongue, soft palate, and gums. It also contains hard structures including the teeth, hard palate, and jaw bones. Structures outside the oral cavity include the upper lip and the lower lip. These close the oral cavity when they rest together. At the back of the mouth is the uvula. It hangs from the soft palate. The uvula prevents food or liquid from passing into the nasal cavity. The tonsils lie on either side of the mouth beyond the palatoglossal arch. These are part of the immune system. Exercises 6 and 7, page 15. So, Peter, can you tell me three soft structures in the mouth? Let me see. Well, the tongue is soft. That's right. And can you tell me two more? The soft palate and the jaw. The jaw? No, that's not a soft structure. Did I say jaw? I meant to say the gums. That's right. And what is the function of the gums? They surround the teeth and cover the bones that hold the teeth in place. Unit 7. Tooth Anatomy. Exercise 5, page 17. Anatomy of a Tooth. A tooth is made up of many parts. Some parts are easy to see. The crown is visible. It sits above the gum line. It is protected by white enamel. Then there are the parts you cannot see. Dentin lies underneath the enamel. Inside that is the root canal. It is a space filled with pulp. Nerves and blood vessels run through the pulp. Below the gum line is the tooth's root. The crown and root meet at the neck. The root connects to the bone. The roots are covered in a hard substance called cementum. The periodontal ligament keeps the tooth in place by securing it to the bone. Exercises 6 and 7, page 17. I need to talk to you about your sore tooth. Do you know what's wrong with it? I do. It's in poor condition. You have some enamel loss. How bad is that? Well, some of the dentin is exposed. Oh, that's not good. Don't panic. I'm going to take some x-rays. That's to check for bacteria in the root canal. And if there's no bacteria? Then I fill the spot with the exposed dentin. Unit 8. Types of Teeth. Exercise 5, page 19. Types of Teeth. Incisors. There are eight incisors. They are at the front of the mouth. They are flat but sharp. Their job is to cut and chop food. Canines. Next are the four canine teeth. They are pointed. Their job is to tear food. Premolars. Next are the eight premolars. They are larger and have ridges. Their job is to crush and grind food. Molars. Then come the eight molars. The tongue moves food you chew backward. The molars then grind the food. After that, you can swallow. Wisdom teeth. There are four wisdom teeth. They grow in when you are older. They are removed if they are causing overcrowding in the mouth. Exercises 6 and 7, page 19. Do you have any questions? Yes, I want to know what my teeth do. Well, there are several different kinds of teeth. Your front teeth are called incisors. What do they do? Their function is to cut and chop your food. The sharp teeth next to them are the canines. I know about those. They rip food, right? Correct. After that, you have the premolars, then the molars. Do they have a special job? Yes, they grind your food. Unit 9. Personal Protective Equipment. Exercise 5, page 21. Guidelines on Personal Protective Equipment, PPE The selection of PPE depends on medical hazards. Contact with blood and or saliva requires PPE.
In dental clinics, primary PPE is as follows. Disposable surgical gloves. Disposable surgical masks. Goggles. Face shields. These items protect medical staff from contaminants. Dentists and hygienists are at risk for infectious diseases. To prevent further contamination, properly dispose of PPE. The following provides the procedure for the removal of PPE. First, remove surgical gloves. Next, remove face shields slash goggles. Finally, remove surgical masks. Place goggles and face shields in dispensers. They are reusable. Be sure to wash your hands immediately afterwards. Use antibacterial soap and warm water. Lather hands and rub for one minute, then rinse. Exercises 6 and 7, page 21. Let's go over the PPE requirements. Sure. All hygienists are required to wear surgical masks and gloves. Sometimes you'll need goggles or face shields. Every time we're in contact with a patient? Not if you're just talking to them, but you need them while you're working. Oh, okay. Are surgical masks disposable? Yes, goggles and face shields, however, are reusable. What if they get blood or saliva on them? Just place them in the receptacle marked hazardous materials, then wash your hands. Unit 10. Dental Practice Technology Exercise 5, page 23 New Dental Care Technology by Stephen Murphy Dr. Sharon Kelly's office has the latest technologies. Every workstation uses a computer, and each computer has voice data entry software. Systems operate on wired and wireless networks. Flat-screen monitors are located throughout the office. These monitors display digital x-rays and intraoral camera images. Lasers and air abrasion are used as alternatives to traditional drilling. In addition, CAD and CAM programs help the dental restorations. Information technology and clinical technology are essential, says Dr. Kelly. Every bit of hardware is put to good use. These days, it's far easier to treat patients thanks to new technology. Exercises 6 and 7, page 23. I was surprised by all the new technology used during my appointment. Oh, yes. Dr. Kelly uses all the latest clinical technology. Like that camera that was used during my exam. You mean the intraoral camera? Yes. Dr. Kelly also showed me a detailed image of how my new crown will look. That's an example of CAD technology. I also like that there were some alternatives to traditional drilling. Yes, we switched to laser drilling and air abrasion a few years ago. Unit 11. Patient Scheduling. Exercise 5, page 25. Morabal Dental. Thank you for choosing Morabal Dental. Your dental health is our priority. Our business hours are from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. We are open every weekday except Wednesday. Evening and weekend appointments are available upon request. To schedule an appointment, please call 555-501-5521. Our receptionists will be happy to help you. We are usually unable to accept walk-ins. Call to reschedule an appointment date or time. We will do our best to accommodate you. We require 24 hours notice to cancel appointments. We also charge a fee for no-shows. Exercises 6 and 7, page 25. Morble Dental, John speaking. How can I help you? Hi, I'm a current patient and I want to schedule an appointment. Okay, do you have any times or dates in mind? I could do any weekday before noon. Let's see. Would 10 a.m. on Monday work for you? Yes, that would be great. I'll make a note of it now. Good. I just want to remind you of our cancellation policy. We need 24 hours notice for cancellations. I understand. Unit 12. Insurance and Fees. Exercise 5, page 27. Office Policy Dear Patient, 
We appreciate the opportunity to care for you. The following information outlines our financial policy. Please provide full insurance information before treatment. We need authorization to accept insurance payments directly. Co-payments are due immediately following appointments. We can help you to process your claim. Your insurance may not cover some services. In such cases, costs are the patient's responsibility. We offer financing to patients without insurance. Talk to our financial coordinator about payment plans. We take cash and personal checks. We also accept most major credit cards. Unpaid balances are subject to interest and fees. Exercises 6 and 7, page 27. You have an unpaid balance on your account. I know. I thought my insurance was going to cover all the costs. How much do I owe? The total amount is $650. I can make a payment today, but not for the full amount. Do you offer payment plans? We do. First, let's process your payment. Okay. Please charge $200 to my credit card. Okay. Here is a brochure about our payment plan. Go ahead and review the information. Thanks. Unit 13. Chairside Manor. Exercise 5, page 29. How to improve your chairside manner. Dental visits make many patients nervous. Working on your chairside manner can help them. Good communication is vital. Always make eye contact with patients. Ask them open ended questions about their health. Then really listen to their answers. Do not interrupt them. Let your patients explain their concerns. Then sympathize with those worries. Patients appreciate this and you gain more information. Better communication allows you to customize examinations. Patients want a dentist who cares. Pay attention to both verbal and nonverbal cues. Patients may not admit to being scared. Nonverbal cues tell you when to provide reassurance. Remember that you want patients to feel comfortable. Exercises 6 and 7, page 29. I had a new patient today. She gave me a compliment on my chairside manner. It's nice to be appreciated. Apparently, her previous dentist kept interrupting her. She couldn't share her concerns. That's too bad. Good communication is vital. I agree. If you don't listen to your patients, you can't treat them properly. Too many dentists are in a rush. Patients pick up on that. Very true. I like to take my time. I want my patients to know that I care. Unit 14. Oral Health. Exercise 5, page 31. Your Guide to Oral Hygiene. Here's what you can do to ensure a lifetime of healthy teeth and gums. Brush regularly. Brush your teeth at least twice a day. Use a soft, bristled toothbrush and use toothpaste containing fluoride. Fluoride strengthens the teeth and prevents tooth decay. Use floss. You should clean between your teeth using floss. Do this daily to prevent the buildup of plaque. Use mouthwash. After eating, bacteria accumulates in the mouth. This, in turn, can cause plaque. If plaque is not removed, it combines with sugars and forms acids. This can cause tooth decay. Stop harmful bacteria by using a good mouthwash. Exercises 6 and 7, page 31. You really need to pay more attention to oral hygiene. What do you mean? There is a lot of plaque in your mouth. Do you brush daily? I brush on most days. You should brush at least twice a day. Do you use floss or mouthwash? No, I used to, but I stopped. You need to start again. If you don't, you increase your chances of gum disease and tooth decay. Okay, I'll get some at the drugstore today. Unit 15. Dental Cleanings. Exercise 5, page 33. Prophylaxis, Chapter 11. Most people refer to prophylaxis as dental cleaning. 
It involves removing plaque and tartar from the teeth. These deposits build up in the mouth over time. Prophylaxis involves three or sometimes four steps. The summary below outlines these steps. 1. Removal of large deposits. Dental hygienists commonly use ultrasonic instruments. These remove larger deposits. 2. Removal of fine deposits. This involves using fine tools to scrape away small tartar deposits. 3. Polishing. The hygienist now cleans and polishes the teeth by applying prophylaxis paste. 4. Fluoride application. This optional step involves the application of fluoride. Patients must not eat this, they must spit it out. Exercises 6 and 7, page 33. I'm nervous about the dental cleaning. What's going to happen? There's nothing to worry about. First, I'll remove the large deposits. Okay, and what next? Then I'll scrape away the smaller pieces of plaque. Is that all? No, after that I'll apply some prophylaxis paste. And then I'm done? No, then I'll apply some fluoride. I'll leave it in for a few moments, and then you'll spit it out. Glossary Accumulate Acid Advice Air abrasion Apply Appointment Authorization Back office Bacteria Balance Blood Blood vessel Bone Build up Burr Burnisher Business hours CAD CAM Cancel Canine Care Cash Cementum Chew Chisel Chop Clean Clinical technology Communication Computer Concern Contaminant Copayment Cost Cover Credit card Crown Crush Curette Cut Daily Date Dental assistant Dental hygienist Dental therapist Dentin Dentist Dentistry Deposit Diagnose Digital X-ray Disposable Drill Elevator Enamel Endodontics Evening Excavator Explain Eye contact Face shield Fee Financial coordinator Financing Floss Fluoride Forceps Front office Goggles Grind Gums Handpiece Hard palate Hardware Health Hygiene Incisor Infectious Information Technology Instruction Insurance 
interrupt. Intraoral camera. Lab. Lab technician. Laser. License. Listen. Lower lip. Maxillofacial. Mechanical room. Mirror. Molar. Mouth. Mouthwash. Neck. Nerve. Nonverbal. No show. Notice. Office. Office manager. Open ended question. Operatory. Oral. Oral cavity. Orthodontics. Palatoglossal arch. Pathology. Patient responsibility. Payment. Payment plan. Pediatric dentistry. Periodontal ligament. Periodontics. Personal check. Plaque. Plugger. Polish. PPE. Practice. Premolar. Probe. Professional. Prophylaxis. Prophylaxis paste. Prostodontics. Pulp. Radiology. Radiology room. Reassurance. Receptionist. Receptionist desk. Recovery room. Referral. Remove. Reschedule. Restroom. Retractor. Reusable. Root. Root canal. Saliva. Schedule. Scrape. Soft palate. Software. Specialty. Spit. Staff. Staff area. Sterilization room. Storage room. Sugar. Surgery. Surgical gloves. Surgical mask. Sympathize. Syringe. Tartar. Tear. Teeth. Time. Tongue. Tonsil. Toothbrush. Toothpaste. Treatment room. Upper lip. Uvula. Verbal. Waiting room. Walk in. Weekday. Weekend. Wisdom tooth. Book 2. Unit 1. Dental exam. Exercise 5. Page 5. What to expect during a dental exam? There are two types of dental exams there are comprehensive examinations and checkups. First time patients usually receive comprehensive examinations. Expect your dentist to examine your head and neck. Your dentist is likely to inspect the soft tissues. This includes the tongue, 
lips, and inside of the mouth. Your dentist also evaluates your gums. The goal is to diagnose the presence of gum disease. He or she will also look for signs of decay. This is also the time to check restorations. Your dentist may examine your bite. This is to check for occlusion problems. X-rays may be part of a comprehensive examination. A checkup is less thorough. It involves an exam and a tooth cleaning and polishing. Your dentist may take x-rays. Regular checkups maintain your oral health. They allow your dentist to screen for diseases like cancer. Your dentist will discuss any oral issues with you. Exercises 6 and 7, page 5. Good morning. I'm Dr. Kan. I'll be conducting your dental exam today. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Now tell me, have you had a comprehensive exam before? I'm not really sure. What does that involve? Well, it's more thorough than a simple checkup. I'll start by looking at your head and neck. And after that? Next, I'll examine the soft tissues and gums. What do you mean by soft tissues? I'm referring to the tongue, lips, and interior of the mouth. Okay. I'm not sure if it's on file, but I have four fillings and a crown. Thanks for letting me know. I'll inspect those and then look for signs of decay. And that's it. I appreciate you taking the time to explain. I'm ready when you are. Unit 2. Radiography. Exercise 5, page 7. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.mydentalclinic.com Dental radiography helps diagnose and treat dental problems. X-rays can detect cavities and impacted teeth and monitor tooth development. X-rays also help dentists fit prosthetics or braces. Intraoral radiography is most common. It includes the following. Occlusal X-rays show tooth development and placement in an arch of teeth. Bite wing x-rays show hidden areas between upper and lower teeth to detect decay. Periapical x-rays show an entire tooth from root to crown to find abnormalities. Extraoral x-rays focus on the jaw and skull. They often identify problems with individual teeth. Examples include the following. Panoramic x-rays show the entire mouth. Tomograms, used to examine structures that are hard to see. Cephalometric projections, show an entire side of the head. Computed tomography, identifies tumors and fractures. Exposure to radiation sometimes leads to health risks. The risk of exposure can be prevented or minimized. Patients can wear lead aprons or lead collars during x-rays. Exercises 6 and 7 Page 7. We're going to do some x-rays to check on the condition of your teeth. What kind of x-rays? I thought this was going to be a simple checkup. It is. This procedure is part of it. We'll do basic intraoral x-rays, and we'll do a few bite wings to check for cavities in the upper and lower molars. I see. Isn't there a risk of radiation exposure? Well, yes. Whenever x-rays are performed, there's a risk but we do our best to minimize it. Are you sure that's possible? Absolutely. We place a lead apron over you. That usually works to prevent radiation damage to the internal organs. I've always been a little suspicious of radiography. I understand your concern, but we do everything possible to make sure that our patients are safe. Unit 3. Dental Prosthetics. Exercise 5, page 9. Dental prosthetics. Prosthetics are common in general dentistry. Patients with missing or damaged teeth require artificial replacements. Dentists use numerous materials and appliances as substitutions for real teeth. One type of prosthetic is a crown. Crowns are usually fixed and made of metal and or porcelain. Dentists often use them to help strengthen existing teeth. However, Sometimes crowns are used to replace missing teeth. More often, bridges and implants replace missing teeth. 
Bridges cover a row of lost teeth. They are usually removable. Implants, on the other hand, are fixed. Dentures are another common dental prosthetic. They are suggested for patients who are missing all or most of their teeth. Partial dentures are for those who need to replace missing teeth in an arch. Veneers are fixed cosmetic prosthetics. They are made of porcelain or plastic. Dentists use them to improve discolored, crooked, or slightly chipped teeth. Exercises six and seven, page nine. You need to replace a missing tooth. There are several options available. What are they? First, I suggest that you consider getting a crown. Yeah, but aren't they made of metal? You can get one that is made of porcelain. However, you're replacing a back tooth. Your bite is strong there. I'd recommend getting metal on the inside and porcelain on the outside. What are my other options? The next possibility is an implant. How does that work? It's like having an entirely new tooth. It's screwed into your jawbone using a tiny titanium attachment. Yikes! Sounds painful. You won't feel much discomfort during the procedure. But I've heard that there might be some discomfort later. I'll get a crown. Unit four, orthodontic treatment, exercise five, page eleven. Do you need orthodontic treatment? Many people suffer from problems of teeth alignment, known as malocclusions. These can cause headaches, tooth decay, and can affect your appearance and confidence. If your teeth stick out too far, known as overbite, not far enough, underbite or crossbite, or don't meet properly, openbite, don't worry, we can fix it. What sort of treatment can I expect? The type of treatment depends on the type of deformity. The most common fixed appliance is braces. If a child has lost baby teeth early, we may fit space maintainers. If your lips and cheeks are putting pressure on the teeth, we may fit bumpers. We may fit a palatal expander to widen the arch of the upper jaw, or retainers to keep the teeth in their new position, or we may fit headgear to align the upper and lower jaws. For more information, book now for an appointment with one of our orthodontists. Exercises six and seven, page eleven. Hmm, I can see you have a slight malocclusion. Sorry, I'm not sure what that means. It means you have a problem with your tooth alignment. Oh, you mean they're a bit crooked? Yes, and as a result, you've got a slight overbite. We really need to treat it. I don't want to wear braces. My teeth are only slightly crooked. It's not a huge deformity. I don't mind. We really need to fix it. It's not just a matter of appearance. Bad tooth alignment can affect your dental health. Really? How? It makes the teeth hard to clean, and so you're more likely to get tooth decay. You may also get headaches and back pain if you don't treat it. Oh, I see. So what happens now? You need to book an appointment with our orthodontist. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Unit five, dental caries, exercise five, page thirteen. Catch dental caries before it's too late. Stage one: slight acid produced by sugar-loving bacteria in plaque start to erode tooth enamel. This leads to the formation of small cavities in pits and fissures in the biting surfaces of teeth. At this point, there are no symptoms; the cavities are painless. Stage two, minor. The cavity deepens until it reaches the underlying dentin, and then it begins to spread. The patient will begin to feel some sensitivity when eating hot, cold, or sweet foods and drinks. Stage three, advanced. The cavity spreads further and begins to weaken the tooth. There may be some discoloration and pain. Stage four: severe. The tooth is now very weak. Fractures may develop when biting down, especially if the cavity is under a filling. The tooth may break altogether. Root canal procedures are necessary to prevent the spread of infection in the dental pulp. Exercises six and seven, page thirteen. I saw Mrs. Hopper for a dental cleaning today. Oh yes, is everything all right? 
Well, yes, but I thought I detected some signs of dental caries. What did you see? Just a couple of pits seemed bigger than they should be. Did Mrs. Hopper have any symptoms? No, she said she didn't feel any pain or sensitivity. But that doesn't mean there isn't a cavity. True. So what did you do? I told her to come and see you for a checkup. That's the best thing to do. I'll be able to detect any cavities with my probe and treat them if necessary. The problem is that she's going away for a month. That shouldn't be a problem. It doesn't sound as if the caries is advanced. Yes, I think it was only in its early stages. Unit 6 Fillings Exercise 5, page 15. Getting a filling. What's going to happen? First, the dentist will numb the area with a local anesthetic. The dentist will then use a drill to remove the decay. He or she will probe and clean the area to check all the bacteria and decay has gone. If the decay is deep, the dentist will apply glass ionomer to fill the area. Then the dentist will add the filling material in layers, using a special light to cure each layer. Then the dentist will shape the material and polish the final restoration. What will the dentist use to fill my tooth? Several materials are available, including gold, ceramic, silver, or amalgam. There are also composite resin fillings made from plastic and glass. Will I need more than one appointment? Dentists make most fillings in one appointment, but indirect fillings require two. You will receive a temporary filling on the first appointment, and your permanent filling on your second visit. Exercises 6 and 7, page 15. So, what type of material do you want for your filling? I'm not sure. What options are available? Well, there's silver amalgam for a start. That's your cheapest option and probably the most common. Okay, but they don't look very attractive, do they? Some people dislike them, but they do last a long time. You can also have gold. I don't really like the idea of a gold filling. No, they're not as popular as they were in the past, and they take two visits to fit. Do you offer materials that are the same color as teeth? Yes, we have a composite material. It looks better, but it isn't as durable. Composite fillings take longer to make, too. Do they? How long? About 20 minutes longer than usual, and they're twice the price of the amalgam. I think I'd prefer to have the amalgam, then. Unit 7. Root Canals. Exercise 5, page 17. Your Guide to Root Canal Surgery The Park Road Practice, 60-62, Park Road, Swinburne Why do I need a root canal? Your tooth is badly infected and you may have an abscess. You are probably experiencing toothache and swelling around your tooth. This will stop after the procedure. How did it get infected? Maybe bad tooth decay exposed the pulp to bacteria, or you received trauma to the tooth, for example, from a heavy blow. What will happen? The dentist will fit a dental dam to keep the area free of saliva. He will then make an opening through the tooth to access the pulp chamber and remove the diseased pulp. Then he will irrigate the pulp chamber and root canal to disinfect them. Then he will seal the area with gutta percha and fill it as normal. How will the dentist restore my tooth? Your dentist may fit a crown onto your weak tooth. Teeth which have had a root canal will have a post to give it extra support. Will I need drugs? The dentist may prescribe antibiotics to prevent infection. Exercises 6 and 7, page 17. I can easily see the cause of your toothache on these x-rays. What's the problem? You've got a bad abscess right at the base of your tooth. It's very badly infected. Will you be able to treat it? Yes, of course. I'll need to do a root canal. That sounds painful. Can't I just take antibiotics? No, I need to get into the pulp chamber in your teeth and remove all the infected tissue. Ouch. How will you get to it? I'll make a hole in your tooth.
but don't worry, I'll fill it in again. Will my tooth be the same afterwards? Yes, I won't need to give you a crown. The tooth is still in quite good shape. Okay, I suppose I'd better go ahead then. Unit 8. Extractions. Exercise 5, page 19. Chapter 9. Exodontias. Exodontia is the formal term for a dental extraction. Dentists perform exodontias for a number of reasons, including tooth decay. The extraction of impacted wisdom teeth is also commonplace. Two categories of extraction include simple and surgical extractions. Dentists perform the former on visible teeth. The dentist simply uses forceps to grasp the tooth, rock it back and forth to loosen it, and remove it. Inaccessible teeth require surgical extractions. These usually require an incision. The dentist elevates the soft tissues covering the tooth and jawbone with a drill or osteotome. He or she may section the tooth into multiple pieces to remove it. Bleeding is common after extractions, but usually decreases after an hour. The open wound takes about a week to heal. Minor complications include infection, swelling, and bruising. Dry socket may follow the removal of lower wisdom teeth. This occurs as a result of poor blood supply to the area. Exercises 6 and 7, page 19. So before I perform the extraction, I need to talk to you about possible complications. Complications? You mean something might go wrong? Don't worry, most complications are minor. And in many cases, there are no problems at all. Okay, so what might happen? Well, first of all, you may get some bleeding. In most cases, this will go away after an hour. Oh, I expected that. You may get some swelling and bruising, too. But that will go away, won't it? Yes, it might take a few weeks, though. Finally, there's a condition called dry socket. What's that? It's when a blood clot fails to form in the socket. It's painful, but we can treat it. Thanks for the warning. I'm happy to go ahead. Unit 9. Gum Disease. Exercise 5, page 21. Gum Disease. Many adults suffer from periodontal disease in some form. The mild form of gum disease is gingivitis. Your gums may get swollen and bleed easily. Cleaning regularly can stop this getting worse. If you don't keep your teeth clean, the problem may advance to periodontitis. This causes gums to recede from the teeth. The patient may suffer from halitosis. Spaces form around the teeth called pockets. Eventually, the teeth become loose and can fall out. How do dentists treat gum disease? Dentists can perform deep cleaning procedures to halt gum disease. Scaling removes tartar above and below the gum line. Root planing removes rough spots on the tooth root. The dentist may prescribe medications such as gels and antibiotics. If these do not work, you may need surgery. Flap surgery involves lifting the gums to remove tartar beneath. A bone graft or tissue graft may be necessary if there is a loss of bone or tissue. Exercises 6 and 7, page 21. I see you have some gingivitis. What's that? It's a kind of gum disease. It's mild at the moment, but it can get worse. I haven't noticed any problems. Really? Have you noticed any bleeding when you brush your teeth? Oh, well, maybe a bit. I didn't think it was a problem. That's an early sign of gum disease. If you don't look after your teeth more, it may advance to periodontitis. What happens then? Your gums start to recede and your teeth become loose. You also get bad breath. That sounds nasty. It is, and the treatment isn't pleasant either. Scalings can be quite uncomfortable, so you need to brush and floss more regularly. Okay, I will. Unit 10. TMJ Problems. Exercise 5, page 23. TMJ Syndrome, Future Advances in Diagnosis and Therapy Journal of Dentistry, Issue 57, Volume 3 
K. A. Duncan, N. Willis, and K. R. Stratham. Introduction The temporomandibular joint, TMJ, connects the mandible to the temporal bone. Muscles in this joint allow mastication and speech. The jawbone moves in three ways. Hinge action allows the mouth to open and close. Gliding action allows the mouth to widen. Rotation allows it to move in a circular motion. Chewing creates a strong force, but a soft disc of cartilage in the TMJ absorbs and distributes the shock. Problems can arise in the TMJ, including pain in the jaw, head, face, ears, or neck. The jaw can lock in position or become difficult to open and close. The sufferer may hear a pop or a click when biting and chewing. He may also feel dizzy or nauseated. There are several causes of TMJ syndrome. First, internal trauma, including bruxism and clenching the jaw, can change tooth alignment and inflame muscles. Macrotrauma can damage the cartilage disc or dislocate the jaw. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis can also erode the bone, causing TMJ syndrome. Exercises 6 and 7, page 23. Open wide! My jaw clicked so loudly. Did you hear that? Yes, I did hear a little pop when you opened your mouth. Do you get that a lot? Yes, I do. Have you had any headaches or any pain in your ears or jaw? A little bit. Only in the mornings, though. It normally goes away by midday. Why? Well, it's not uncommon to get problems in the joint here. It's called the temporomandibular joint. It connects your mandible, that's your jaw, to your skull. So why do people get problems there? Well, problems arise from grinding the teeth or clenching the jaw. Do you do that? A bit when I'm stressed at work. What can you do about it? Well, I'll have a look in your mouth and see if there are any noticeable problems. Then I can give you suitable treatment. Okay, thanks. Unit 11. Oral Infections. Exercise 5, page 25. Painful mouth sores are a sign of infection. But what type of infection is it? www.myoralhealth.com My tongue is red and sore. It's probably a bacterial infection, like scarlet fever. Your doctor can treat this with antibiotics. I have white ulcers with red edges on my tongue. Maybe it's herpes simplex. This is a chronic viral infection, and it's very contagious. Cold sores are a sign of mild herpes. You may get similar ulcers if you have measles or chickenpox. Medication is available, but the problem can recur. There are white spots inside my lip. It sounds like the fungal infection, thrush. It can be treated with antifungal medication. I've got painful ulcers on the roof of my mouth. Canker sores like these result from a virus or stress. They disappear after about two weeks. I've got blisters inside my cheeks and they keep popping. Vesicles and bullae like these are symptoms of disease and require a consultation with your doctor. Exercises 6 and 7, page 25. So, are you having any problems with your teeth? Not my teeth, no but I keep getting these nasty ulcers. Hmm, yes, canker sores are a common sign of stress, and it can be hard to make them go away. I know, but the thing is, I'm not especially stressed at the moment. Okay, let me take a look. Where are the sores? On the inside of my cheek, just here. I see. You have lots of little vesicles and a couple of rather large boulet, too. What do you think the problem is? Actually, I think you'd better see your doctor. I don't understand. Isn't it a dental problem? No, some mouth infections are a sign of an underlying medical issue. You'd better see a doctor. He or she can perform some tests. Okay, I'll do that. Unit 12. Oral Cancer. Exercise 5, page 27. Oral Cancer. What you need to know. What is it? 
Cancer is the uncontrollable growth of cells in the body. These invade in any part of the mouth. What are the symptoms? Oral cancer appears as a growth or sore that does not go away. Sufferers may have rough, eroded crusts or speckled patches in the mouth. They may have difficulty chewing or swallowing. They may also have a sore throat. How do professionals diagnose it? During your checkup, your dentist will check for the cancer symptoms. If he sees anything suspicious, he may conduct a brush biopsy. This involves taking a small sample of the tissue and analyzing it for abnormal cells. Alternatively, a specialist will carry out a scalpel biopsy to find out if the growth is cancerous. How can we treat cancer? Surgeons remove the tumor. Then the patient receives radiation therapy or chemotherapy to destroy any remaining cancer cells. Exercises 6 and 7, page 27. At 10 o'clock, Mrs. Webb is coming in for a biopsy. A biopsy? You don't do many of those. No. Thankfully, we don't get many patients with abnormal growths in their mouths. I'm surprised you didn't refer her to a specialist. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't think this lady's sores are cancerous. No? Why not? Well, she has a speckled patch on her inner lip. It may just be a fungal infection. It's better to be safe than sorry. I agree. So I'm going to do a simple brush biopsy to get a sample of the tissues. So I need the scalpel ready. The scalpel? I think you meant to say the brush. Oh yes, sorry, you're right. Okay, I'll get everything ready for you. Unit 13. Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Exercise 5, page 29. Andrew Price, DDS, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeon. Dr. Price can perform the following procedures. Wisdom tooth removal. Wisdom teeth may grow sideways or remain trapped beneath the gum and bone. Poorly positioned and partially erupted teeth can cause cysts and infections to develop, affecting healthy teeth. Removal of wisdom teeth will eliminate such problems. Facial trauma. Dr. Price is a skilled oral surgeon, trained in treating injuries such as lacerations, avulsed teeth, and fractures. Sinus grafts. When upper teeth are removed, a sinus graft may be necessary to hold dental implants in place. In severe cases, Dr. Price will conduct a ridge expansion to increase the dimensions of the bony ridge of the jaw. Sleep apnea. Dr. Price can perform a uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, UPPP, to treat this condition. In more complex cases, orthonathic surgery is recommended. Cleft lip and palate. Dr. Price is qualified to surgically treat cleft lips and cleft palates. Dr. Price has had great success in improving the appearance of the mouth and restoring its functions. Exercises 6 and 7, page 29. Looking at this x-ray, I can see why you keep having problems with your wisdom tooth. What's the matter? It isn't erupting properly because it's trapped behind the next tooth. Is that why it keeps getting infected? Yes. That's why you keep getting those nasty cysts. We'll need to remove it. I was worried you would say that. It's nothing to worry about. You can have it done under sedation. Will you extract it here? No, our oral surgeon, Dr. Price, will do it. Oh, yes, I know him. He treated my nephew's cleft palate. Did he? Yes, he does all kinds of surgery. He performed a sinus graft on my grandmother. It sounds as if I'll be in safe hands then. Unit 14. Anesthesia. Exercise 5, page 31. Common Anesthetics in Dentistry. Dental anesthesiology offers patients and medical professionals numerous choices for treatment. These choices are based on procedures. Most dental procedures only require a topical anesthetic or local anesthetic. 
Benzocaine and lidocaine are the most common examples of both. Benzocaine is produced as an ointment gel. Dental care professionals apply it to the gums. It numbs a small area in the mouth. Lidocaine is the liquid. Dentists inject it into the gums. It is capable of numbing an entire section of the mouth. Benzocaine helps prepare an area for a lidocaine injection. Dentists use general anesthetic for more serious procedures, such as surgery. General anesthetic causes a patient to become unconscious. In some cases, intravenous liquids are administered during general anesthesia. Sedation is not always necessary. In these instances, nitrous oxide is a good option. Nitrous oxide, or laughing gas, is inhaled. It acts as a block on the nervous system. The patient remains awake during procedure but feels no discomfort. Exercises 6 and 7, page 31. First, I'm going to apply benzocaine to your gum line. That'll then prepare you for an injection of lidocaine. What exactly are those substances? I mean, what do they do? Benzocaine is a topical anesthetic. It's an ointment gel. It'll numb you a bit. It may taste bad at first, but you'll get to rinse your mouth out. Okay, so it acts as a block. Right. Lidocaine has stronger effects. It is a local anesthetic. You'll need it to avoid feeling pain while I'm drilling. So lidocaine is an intravenous drug. Right. Will that be a problem for you? Well... Have you ever had trouble with any of these substances before? No, I just hate the idea of getting a needle. I think I'd prefer nitrous oxide. Unit 15. Medication. Exercise 5, page 33. Dentistry and Medication There are several types of medications used in dentistry. Most help to treat pain and infections. Pain Medication Over-the-counter pain relievers, including acetaminophen and ibuprofen, treat minor toothaches. Corticosteroids relieve discomfort and redness in the mouth. For severe pain, narcotics such as muscle relaxants are available by prescription. Treatments for infections Antibiotics, such as penicillin, can help prevent infections after dental procedures. Chlorhexidine helps to control plaque and prevent gingivitis. Side effects may include tooth discoloration. Tetracycline helps to treat periodontal disease. Antifungals help to treat thrush, or yeast, in the mouth. Some medications can prevent dental problems. Fluoride toothpastes, for example, help patients avoid dental cavities. Prescription-strength fluoride is also available if recommended by a dentist. Antiseptic rinses can reduce plaque and kill bad breath germs. Lastly, saliva substitutes such as pilocarpine treat dry mouth. Dry mouth leads to growth of bacteria. To help with this, various sprays and pilocarpine tablets are available. Exercises 6 and 7, page 33. I'm going to prescribe an antifungal medication. It'll help treat your thrush. Do I really need a prescription? I'm afraid so. Why do you ask? Do you have any concerns? Well, are there any side effects? No, it's a very mild medication. You shouldn't have any problems. Still, are there any over-the-counter medications you'd recommend? No, I need to prescribe this treatment. Nothing else will get rid of the yeast. I see. Now, be sure to take one half of each pill with a mouthful of water. It'll dissolve. Swish the solution around for about 30 seconds. Then swallow. Well, I'll give it a try. Good. You can prevent future infections by regularly rinsing out your mouth with an antiseptic mouthwash.